in Babel, he means he, he's referring to Roman. But he's afraid to write Roman, he wrote Babel. This is what scholars are, taught, are saying. Biblical scholars. No, no, eating, eating language, yani eating cook cow, Hadisha, this is not history. Okay, this is uh, biblical reality. Tao Hadisha has different genres. One of the genres is called apocrypha. Apocrypha means that you use codes was it, that these codes were um, common and where and where um, everyone understand what it means among Christian, but it wasn't very clear to other people who were not in that group. And most of the time, apocrypha uses you know that in that genre they use images and uh, uh, Images and these books are always written when there's time of persecution. For instance, um, there is even in the Bible and the Gospel some some passages of Abu Qifa when Jesus is saying that Sarah bit Cheshkin and Shimshel Talakla, who Sarah Lem of Zebaro, and it have it re Alena Hapesh Shilta Hapesh Tretavi Bershala, Haplabla Hapesha, you know, and and Yamatha Temri, you know. Turan and Pur and Allah, and this is apocryphal language. It's not. Um, it has meanings in it that we need to unpack. One of the book that is all apocrypha is the book of Revelation. With some people, which some people take it as a um, literal meaning, you know, but it's not. You know, it's apocryphal, apocryphal genre that was written when there, is, there was persecution on Christians in the Roman Empire and everything has meanings. It's not that you know, he was personally afraid, but by that I mean like when there is persecution you use that language. <laughs> All right, um, I don't want to stop here a lot, but um, this, I mean, either Marpotros Etiel or Babel, Yaletiel Babel, either or, um, this has not, this will um, not change anything about the apostolic uh, see of the Assyrian Church of the East, okay? And uh, some main sources that uh, histo all historians use to uh, support uh, these, um, <clears throat> this part, this apostolic uh, tradition of the church is Acts of Martuma. It's written, um, there is one of, oldest manus, one of the oldest manuscript that is uh, dated in the 5th century. The book is written, not, this manuscript is copied on the 5th century and it's still alive. There. It was written in Edessa in 225 AD. Okay. Every time we say like, this book is written in certain year, we have to know that, you know, the, the author is using documents that are probably hundred and more year older. And he's using them to write his book. So when the book of Martoma, the Acts of Martoma were written in 225, the author is using some documents that are probably 50 and 100 years old. Okay? Probably but, uh, but by, this is by, one of Bardesan's disciples. Bardesan was also Christian from Erbil, from uh, 
Arbel, yes, who went to Urhe and uh, uh, died there. We see that the book is written in Edessa. This confirmed the belief that there is a strong connection between Martuma and Christianity in Mesopotamia. Therefore, we can truly say that Martuma is the first apostle to preach Christianity in our, to our people. The Apostron. The Apostron is uh, a book, a collection of the four Gospels. Pishtiktiwa uh, biyid Totianus. Totianus Aturaya. He calls his name Totianus of Assyria. Okay, he went to Rome, he wrote it in, 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 in um, Greek language, but he died in 170, so he was from Urhe also. The existence of such work proved that Christianity had uh, prospered in this area. You know, to have someone who was able to, you know, who was thinking to put all these books together and make one book uh, to help people understand the gospel easier, you know, that means you have a Christianity on that place that was uh, uh, matured. The Law of Countries. Uh, this is a book called Namus al-Atrawat. Shimu'il Namus al-Atrawat. It's written by one of Bardesan's disciples. His name is Philip. Uh, between 19... 60, uh, I mean 196 to 226. It's a conversation between the master, Barsoma, Bardesan, sorry, and some of uh, his disciples about God, sin, freedom, destiny, and the power of law. The book contains information about Christianity and their customs, and their Christian customs. So also, the, you know, this book is very valuable resource in studying history of the um, of the Church of the East. History of Eusebius, is that one that we talk about of Caesarea. Uh, the book is about the Church's history from the beginning till the time of the author, which is the fourth century. It contains very important, valuable information about the Church history that was collected from the documents and archives of the churches at that time. The book was written in the first half of the fourth century, like after the Nicene uh, Council, Kinesia 325. It's important, the book is, uh, the book, the importance of the book to our study is that it's dedicate, it dedicates one whole chapter for the beginning of Christianity in Mesopotamia. Also, the book mentions the agreement of the Church of Mesopotamia on the decision made by the Western Church about the Passover in, nine, in eight, 189. There was a debate between the churches in 189 to either like do have Passover on the Sunday or in the, on the Passover day, whenever that day falls. So, you know, some of the churches were uh, arguing that we should do it on the same Passover of the Jewish. And some were debating that, no, we have to do it on the Sunday after the Jewish Passover. And the, the last one was the one that they agreed on. And the churches of the East in Mesopotamia sent their agreement. They could not attend the meeting, but they sent their agreement, which means they were, you know, they were considering their opinion on that matter. And again, if, if there was no church on that area, they would not consider their opinion. Why did they choose Sunday? Huh? Why did they choose Sunday over the Passover day? Uh, we have to go back. Never mind. Uh, they wanted to, uh, you know, they wanted to call Sunday the, uh, the day of the Lord. And it was called the day of the Lord. And, um, Uh, the other thing I think was that they wanted to be different from Jewish. They, you know, they don't want it to have that, um, like tabahiya, my body, like fellowship. Yeah, not fellowship, but not, not like they want it, They don't want to be second after Jewish. They want to have their own heritage, and, and so they they created themselves. 
And of course, the, re the other reason was liturgical also, because they wanted to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord not just one time a year, they wanted to celebrate it every Sunday. And that's when they started doing Mass every Sunday. Um, the other book is The Teaching of Maradei. Um, the book was written in the 4th or 5th century, however, the author collected his materials from the old documents and archive of the Church of Edessa. Okay. Uh, Act of Marmari. The book was written in the end of the 4th century. Marmari was the disciple who, or, who evangelized Salaf Tispun. Salaf Tispun is the capital of the Parthian Empire. And it's, surround, and it's surrounding city in the second half of the first century, uh, first century around 85, you know, 90. And he is the disciple of Maradei, one of the 72 disciples Jesus chose to help as apostle. History of Edessa, this book is called Tarikh al-Rahavi, Tashid al -Durhe. The book was written, it's, it's published in Arabic, but I'm not sure if there's any in, uh, in English. It was written in the 6th century by collecting all the documents archived in Edessa Church. The book starts from the event that occurred in 201 AD when a flood destroyed the church, uh, the old church, so the bishop, you know, uh, ordered to build a new church uh, instead of the other one that was destroyed by the uh, flood. The Church of uh, the Chronicle of Arvid. There is a debate over this book. Some people think that this book was fake by Alphonse Mangana. And uh, among them is Yusuf Habbi and uh, Father John Vie. And some people say, no, this book was authentic, but although the book contains uh, some valuable information, um, the book was written between 550 to 569 AD. It records the account of Bishop of Erbil starting from Mar Qida, who was ordained by Mar at Mar in 104, as you mentioned earlier. The Tower, Tawid Magdla Yamil, Al Majdal. There are two books in the same name, different account. There's few differences in each account. It's, there's a section of that book of Magdal ila Tash'it al Kursi al Patriarcha. It talks about every patriarch, what he did, and what he accomplished, and when he died, and about uh, everything that they could collect about it. One is by Mari bin Suleiman. They're both written in Arabic, and they were, they were published in Latin. And Amr bin Matta. They wrote the account of all patriarchs from the beginning till the 13th century. The book was written at the end of the 13th century. But of course they used, you know, some resources and documents that are very <coughs> valid. Any questions? Hmm? No? Okay, let's take a break. Huh? Ten minutes. in general about this I just wanted to mention it um, like how did our church um, took this tradition or let's say establish this tradition okay what does apostolic succession mean means that 
It's a method whereby the ministry of Christian church is held to be driven from the apostles, from the apostles by, a, by a continuous succession, which has usually been associated Uh, which uh, was usually usually associated with the claim that the succession is through a series of bishops. You know, Yani Dahi, apostle came, preached, ordained a bishop, and then that bishop ordained another one, and another one, another one. It's called apostolic succession. That means the last one you go back to is the apostle, or at least one of the apostles' disciples, like in case of Maradeh. Okay? Apostolic succession is also understood as a continuity in doctrine teaching, not just in ordination, institutional, but also in faith, in dogma. Okay? So, what is the church tradition? Our church tradition. The historical, the old historical resources emphasize on the apostolic origin of the Eastern Sea. Sea means like position. It's a, a Christian canonical term of position. It's more suitable in this case because the bishop or the head of the church is called oversee. You know, in some translation. You see the word oversee called in you know, a oversee, which means the one who oversees over other priests and deacons. That's why he's over he's oversee. So they call the head of that church the apostolic see or episcopal see or patriarchal see. That means position, the, the highest rank in that in that local church. The book Act of Marmari had a great influence on the future authors about in this matter and set the foundation for the long-lasting tradition in our church regarding the Apostolic See, which could be summarized in the following points. Okay, Marmari, the disciple of Maradei, built the Church of Koche, the first patriarchal cathedral in Salih. This is one. And then Marmari has the credit of establishing patriarchal seat in Salih. Because he ordered that any bishop or, or patriarch or catholicos of the church has to be ordained in Salih, in this church. He also established the apostolic, uh, the position of bishop of Kashka. And ordained, uh, and ordained it, it's himself uh, first bishop for the uh, for that church. So what's the bishop bishop of Kashka? Um, in our church, for the long time, there was a position that was virtual. It was called bishop of Kashka, and his main. Um, Task was Yamrila Dia Gu Edit Kaldai Mu'awan Patriarchi. Yani Patriarch Assistant. If the Patriarch dies, he's the one who calls a meeting for a new election. Okay, if the Patriarch is out of the diocese, the patriarchal diocese, he is in charge. He takes over and then he administers the uh, church until he comes back. So he is not vice president, but sort of like vice patriarch. But he cannot take place of patriarch after he dies. He can't do that. He just you know, assumes the authority until they elect another patriarch. It could be him, it could be another one. Okay? That's the Bishop of Kashgar. Kashgar ila wasilt. مدينة واسط بعراق خديدة شو محافظة واسط خمتة قريبة على كشكر يا خمتة شو بيش لكوفا كوفا means كوبا يعني كتوة which is an Assyrian old name in عربية القارية شو مواسط 
Um, so he established that seed. That means he has an assistant that will take over, you know, and uh, for of administration until they ordain another one. He is the one who decided that Bishop of Salih is the one who uh, who sees over all the other bishops of the East. So this is um, this is the summary of that tradition that was Mahmeri. Uh, <coughs> Uh, that our church still believes in and of course it didn't come hatha easy like the way it is right now it was developed so however there is a problem in this account of succession of Marmari uh, his successor according to this is Mar Papa Papa is not Pope okay his name is Papa Papa Aramaya, his name is Papa Aramaya. So he was the patriarch in 310 AD. The only thing, in this, the problem in this tradition is that from Marmari, who died in the end of, at the beginning of the second century, till Mar Papa, who was in the beginning of the fourth century, there is no other bishop. They don't mention any. La? in the book of, of the act and the act of Marmari who is Mahmari who had a great influence on this tradition so how did they solve this we have two traditions tradition of Erbil of Hdeyo which is mainly depending on the book of Chronicle of Erbil now at Mushik was written by Mushik Azkhan in the 6th century the tradition of Erbil considered Mar Papa the first bishop of Sali because Mar Adai, according to Mari bin Suleiman and the Chronicle of Erbil, went to Erbil and ordained his disciple Qida to be the bishop of Erbil. Like we mentioned that in 104. Okay. Then ten bishops after that came, and they're all mentioned in the book of uh, Chronicle of Arabi. So, what's happening here? There is no Christians, no churches anywhere else according to this tradition. No, in, not in Salim, not anywhere else. Only in Arabi. And there's bishop there. And then, according to this tradition, Shakhlopa was Bishop of Erbil in 20, 225 to 273. People of Salih asked him to ordain a priest. You know, there's a lot of Christians now in Salih, they want a priest. So he ordained a priest. And then, a few years later, they, they said, you know, it's not good to go back and forth always from Erbil, Salih, which is south, 40 kilometers south of Baghdad, Madain, and the Salman Park. From there to Erbil, it's a long, you know, commute, especially they didn't have cars. So, you know, at the end, they asked him to ordain a bishop for them, and this, uh, the bishop of Erbil, ordained Mar Papa to be the first bishop of Salib in 310 according to this and that's how you know Mar Papa after you know he saw himself a bishop of the capital city so and a lot of other priests and bishops from different towns are asking them the favor is you know can you talk to the king about this matter, we want to build church here, we want to do this and that, and he was, you know, he had some connections with them, and he saw that he's doing favor for them, so he installed himself head of the church. That's what this tradition say. Uh, the tradition of Salih, what does that say? It say, which is probably you heard it many times from the patriarch, from his audience during his speech, is when he speaks about Tash'it al Kursiya Patriarchaya. He mentioned this tradition. And then according to this tradition, which the church has strongly, um, Marmari is the first bishop of Salih. After he left Edessa and went down to evangelize in East region, 
He settled down in Salah of Tisma, and there he built a big church named Kohe, the cathedral, where all the patriarchs were ordained. Okay? According to this tradition, again, Mar Abris was the next bishop of the um, sorry, of the two towns. I said two times. Of the two towns, which is Madain, Iqarila, two towns. Uh, these two towns are Salah or Qispur. Okay? Layla two towns. That has nothing to do with Charles Dickens. <coughs> After Marmari, he was chosen by Marshalman, Bishop of Jerusalem. You know, when Marmari died, B Bishop of Jerusalem uh, chose Mar Abris, which was a cousin or from the family of Mariusip. Mariusip Iva played with Mat Marian. Um, the carpenter, and he sent it to to uh, to the east. Marabras died in 107. The patriarchal see remained um, empty for 20 years, and then Marabraham, also cousin of Jacob, the son of Joseph, the carpenter, was elected. He was res he resided in, he was residing in Antioch, and after he was ordained, he was sent to the east. And after Mar Abraham died, the patriarch see, uh, remained empty for 19 years again. And then Maria was ordained, was also from the family of Joseph the Carpenter. And then Maracha, Achad Aoi, you know, Mar Maria chose two people before he died. Mar Shimei uh, wa Achad Aoi, Ochena Iwa Shimei, Kamisho. And he sent both of them to Antioch to be one of them to be ordained and come back to Salem. But on the way, on the border, they were arrested by the Roman soldiers because they were considered spies. And they killed Kamishu and Achadaw, he ran away and he went to Jerusalem and he was ordained there and went back to Salem. And from then, they decided that it's too dangerous to send people to Jerusalem to be ordained. So the, the Western Fathers and the Eastern Fathers agree that, you know, Salat Wokhtispun will be able, the Bishop of the East are, are, are free, are, have all the rights to choose their own Bishop and ordain him in Salat. And after him, of course, uh, Sheikh Lopa was uh, Mar Awa, Mar Papa, sorry, uh, the first bishop who was ordained in Church of Koch. So, this tradition say that the only reason these names are not mentioned in the book of Marmari from Abris Hal before Mar Papa, Sheikh Lopa, uh, uh, they were not mentioned because they were not ordained in Church of Kohen. That's their excuse, which is, you know, valid. Because according to that book, Marmari ordered that all the bishops should be ordained in the Church of Kohen to be legally, let's say, you know, to have the right to be called Absolopet Sal. That's why none of these names was mentioned in that tradition. It was customary that the Apostolic See would be established in the city of historical and political and strategic significance. You know, all these churches like Alexandria, Antioch, Constant Constantinopolis, Rome, they were all major cities. And that's how also in the East, Salad of Lisbon was the capital of the Roman Empire, which was natural for the church sea to become an apostolic sea over the, the east. The first city was Erbil of Kamta, which had historical significance, you know, but Salat had political and strategic significance. So that made her, let's say, win over Erbil that only had historical significance. Hadha um Kyash Shiva Kursit Sadiq or Kursia Patriarchaya at Eta at Madh. Okay. Any questions for me? 
Uh, we still have time, and I have materials, but I don't have them for you, so, yes. Um, always, the question is why they send them to Antioch to be ordained. Um, you know, there is now theology in Rome that they call Rome a mother church and all the other churches a daughter church. Uh, uh, there was no such thing then. They were all sister churches. But they always have respect, you know, for the churches that has impact on the history and uh, um, Amrach um, developing of the church. And Antioch was one of, the, uh, one of these cities because if it wasn't for Antioch, Christianity would be still a Jewish sect. After they went to, Je to you know, after the apostles escaped Jerusalem, they went to Antioch, and then they were called Christian. And then the disciple decided that each one should go a different way. Of course, you know, um, uh, um, but the tafsir al-ruhani yeah. So, um, the this of course was the, has an impact on all the churches. The role that Antioch played has diff and uh, has impact. And also Antioch was the uh, first the first patriarch of Antioch was Marcotos, Shimon Keba. Because he was he, he went from there to Rome and he was still in Rome. So honestly he was never patriarch in Rome. Pope. Uh, P Peter. He was patriarch in Antioch, but he died in Rome. Okay, so if you go, you know, through the tradition, um, all these Eastern churches, the Amrachalai, Hadiya ila Eastern churches, Kamtei Khashbiniwala, everything that's beyond Euphrates River was considered to us Western, but now it's even those who are, uh, anything who is in the Middle East is considered Eastern church. Uh, all these Western churches, um, um, uh, Antioch, uh, Alexandria, they all have a great respect for Antioch because, you know, because of Marpo, Marpotros and his role. That was the reason. Lewa reason tabaiya fellowship. The reason was, you know, if this, because it, it was either there or Jerusalem. Lewa, the bishop was not ordained in, in Antioch only. Some of them were ordained in Jerusalem. Um, as we see, like from what just uh, studied, of course, we'll, we will clarify that, that more, is that the Church of the East um, administratively was uh, developed from Antioch, liturgically from Jerusalem, and uh, dogmatically and theologically from Urhe. Those are three big cities three big churches that influenced Salik and helped her create uh, its own heritage and tradition. Okay, so Orishnam, uh, liturgically, of course not only in the Assyri to the Assyrian church, to all churches, because, uh, because of the geographical, you know, Ethan uh, Khaktawa, it's called Rihlat um, Egeria, the journey of Nigeria or Aetiria or I don't know what they call it in English. But this woman in the fourth century, she was a nun. She went to Jerusalem. She went all the places to Urhe to uh, things that were uh, she she like described all the liturgies that were happening in Jerusalem. Go Bethlehem, Bethlehem, go, go Jerusalem. You know the, the, the Church of Resurrection, Church of Mahat, uh, Nativity. Nativity. Nativity, yeah. 
So it recorded all these, all these um, uh, fra uh, liturgical services. And you know, we compare that with, with what we have in our church, and they, have, they are like 80% similar to what, happened, what was going on in Jerusalem. So we know that you know, liturgically, the Church of the East was impacted by uh, Jerusalem, and administratively by, uh, like I said, Antioch because of apostolic uh, tradition that Mar uh, Shimon Kepa was, or Peter was uh, ordained, or was the first patriarch there, and then Orha, or Orbe, or Edessa, all one name for one city, because there was a school there that um, um, had impact on the uh, theological and spiritual process of uh, development of our church. No questions? <coughs> yes. Uh, Rabbi, you said uh, the Bishop mm -hmm. of Kashgar. Like today, would we like recognize it like a metropolitan? Who? The Bishop of Kashgar. Uh, is it kind of like we don't have a bishop of Kashgar. Yeah, but is it? He was a metropolitan. Yes, is it similar was to metropolitan. Yes, metropolitan of Kashgar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chaldeans still have, they still have one. I think Adia ili Shlemun Warduni. You know, Karta iwa Amanu Dali. Karta Bishna Patriarcha, but um, Adia Bakshan ili Shlemun Warduni. Ahman Litlan. In Ahman Haiwan, it would be in uh, Marbles. It would be a Miskop of Keshkar. Uh. Oh, it's not connected, huh? Mm. Uh, STN was Wi Fi. STN was WIFI. Mm. Guest it says Wi-Fi is off. I'm not here. No, I'm not here. I'm more like... Okay. Okay, you do it for me. So, Hamzama Khadsha Basit, you know, if you can open it, go to drive one or one drive, Madi Shemin Awa, at the Microsoft, the cloud of Microsoft. Drive one, one, one drive, drive, or one drive. One drive, yeah. Go to OneDrive.com, please. Okay. Um, so the church start to become more organized. You know, it's natural that when you have a lot of people uh, coming um, to the to the faith, um, you know, they will have needs, spiritual needs. Uh, pastoral needs that needs to be um, to be fulfilled. So, um, from the beginning of the first century till the um, third century, Christianity in Mesopotamia start moving from Urhe to Erbil to down down to South of Tishpun, and then all the way down to the Persian Gulf, or Khalij al-Arabi, the Um And what, ha what happened there is that Parthian Empire, uh, which was the, the empire, the, the family that, let's say, that uh, governed in the Persian side, you know, on that time there were only two empires. The Roman Empire, which was on the west side of the Euphrates River, and the uh, Persian Empire, which was on the eastern side of the Euphrates River. Till 224, from uh, before that, till 24, before Christianity, till 24, Parthian Empire, or in Chakmagayabila al Arshaqiyin, in Arshaqai, the family of Arshaq, was the one who was. Uh, governing or controlling the air, the, the palace. So they, um, these people were very tolerant. They have um, semi um, multi gods in their place. So when Christianity came, 
um, you know, they thought that it's not going to hurt to add another god into their collection. And uh, they have no problem with Christianity growing and increasing. And uh, that helped Christianity, of course, uh, spread and go all the way to Mahmari, you know, to the east uh, of uh, Tigris River, and then go down to the to the Gulf, Dual Khalij. And then in the third century, uh, the church was still under the influence of. Jerusalem, liturgically, and Orhe, uh, dogmatically and spiritually, and uh, Antioch, uh, administratively. You know, they would look up into these people. In 20, 28 of Nisan, Nisan, April 28, who remembers what... <laughs> لا من يتأخر الفن عشرين نيسان. Was the birthday of Saddam Hussein. So on 28 of April 2000, I mean 224, uh, Ardashir took over. Ardashir was Sasanian, different tribe. So they took over. What did they do? Why did they do that? Huh? Revolution. Revolution, yes. Mm -hmm. So he took over. And for the first uh, um, Ardashir and then Shapur, the first Yazdigar, and the Kule, he was very tolerant kings. So they have no problem still with Christianity. But every time there's a revolution, there's also you know, people who would support the revolution, and there's also people who are with the group that was banished. Nah? And there was a divi division in their kingdom. So what they did, and uh, they were trying to uh, bring these people together. They were trying to, you know, to bring unity to their kingdom. And first thing came to their mind was to use the religious power. And the religious of Persian was Zaradusht. Zaradusht Tai. Am I able to read English? Zoroastrianism. Yes. So, I, I have it in my, in my notes, but I can't pronounce it. Yeah. So, Zaradusht Tai was their, uh, their faith. And they depend on their their uh, spiritual leaders, their, their religious leader, to you know try to uh, melt all this division and try to bring their unity in their kingdom. Okay. they have, the Sasanian, is fight everyone, you yeah. know, they, they, they fight, they fought uh, Romans, a lot of wars between them and Romans, um, they fought um, anyone who was not really trying to go with their uh, flow, let's say, so they fought Christians. They fought Jewish and everyone. And because they're um, because they're they're uh, what do you call it? They have that national tendency also more than the Parthian. They are more nationalist than uh, uh, yeah. That's why they wanted to. Um, to submit all these groups under their uh, their power. So in the 
in the second half of the third century, Shapur, who was still tolerant with the Christian, uh, when uh, he he um, he was very strong, he was powerful. He had a, a powerful army. He he went to Antioch and he took their king and the patriarch and a lot of noble families from uh, from Antioch and he brought them to Ahwaz. You know, Ahwaz is a place that is mostly Arab now, but it's still in Iran, which is south, near Basra, near Amara, on the south of Iran. Uh, they, they built a city called Riyadh Dasher. He brought these people, these Christians, who were uh, from Antioch Church, and he brought them to the uh, east. So these people have a great impact on the organizing of the Church of the East. Besides that, uh, on the beginning of Shabur, Shabur the first, uh, on the end of Shabur the first, there is, there he started to, um, to make the the, the uh, chair of Salih, the, the bishop of Salih to become the patriarch of the whole East, you know, that was not an easy task. A lot of people uh, opposed that. And uh, there is a story that of the first uh, synod that occurred in the church of the East, which is not recorded, but we know there was a synod. So when Papa started to uh, started to organize the church. Some people thought that he was doing something good and healthy to organize the church and have, you know, a hierarchy. Uh, some people think that he was an arrogant person who was who was just thirst of, you know, to to con thirst of control by Yawakhela out by Kulinashin. But um, according to of course Habbi and Delhi and I believe so that it was natural. He was a very wise person, very strong person, and he was a person that looked very far. And he see that you know it's better that the church would be could be organized under one or one chair, like all the other churches, like Antioch, uh, uh, Alexandria, and uh, Constantinopolis. Um, the other thing. The role of Mar Papa. The other thing was, the Roman Empire was still has still uh, was persecuting Christian in the Roman Empire. The, you know, Constantine was not there yet. So before Constantine, um, Fabian was the king who issued that anyone who uh, does not who, who become Christian or he who confess that he's Christian would be killed. So a lot of Christians on the border, border of the Roman Empire flee to the Eastern Empire. So these three facts, the personality of Mar Papa and the, the captive that uh, the King Shapur I brought from Antioch and these people who flee from, from Roman Empire also, all these three factors help the church to grow stronger and become more organized. Okay, so um, I wanted to end my uh, before we go to the to the Kursi Salaf on how it took and then the persecution in the fourth century. Before we go, uh, we're going to end the second century and the beginning of the second century here. Uh, I would like to tell the story um, when Mar Papa started to. Um, to Awadli um, Kursi Salaf, the head of the church, to make the Kursi Salaf see the apostolic see, like we said, like I said, uh, some of the bishop opposed him, and one the head of this bishop was Marmils, um, Episcopal Shosh, Shosh ila Shushan, sorry, ila Shosh Tadia, Episcopal Shushan. So. 
they they got, they gathered. They had a meeting, the first meeting that is not recorded, and in that meeting, they all, you know, Marmius st uh, stood and he took uh, against the patriarch, and the patriarch Mar Papa. They say that um, he was holding the gospel, and he said to to Marmius like, put your hand on this, and he he put the Bible, uh, he hid the Bible on the table. And he he had a stroke. La la mar papa. So some people, like I said, there are two groups. Some of them thought that he was, you know, he just had a stroke because he was nervous because of all because of his jealousy and and and, and love and passion for the church. And some said that he that God sent his power and punished him because he threw the Bible. The gospel like that on the floor. So these bishops, of course, they ordained Marshamon, uh, Marshamon Barsabai. You you heard of Marshamon Barsabai, who was his archdiacon, his archdeacon. They ordained him, but he he wrote a letter to the uh, to the bishops and the eastern and the western churches like Jerusalem and Antioch and Meparqat uh, and Urhay, and he wrote a letter and. They wrote back that Mar Papa will become a patriarch of the East till he dies, and then after he dies, Mar Shimon will take his place. But as long as he's alive, uh, Mar Shimon will uh, will be his assistant. So this was the a significant letter that um, let's say that was that made the chair of Sabbath, the patriarch of the, the bishop of Sabbath, to be the apostolic sea over the east okay this incident and then after that in 410 this will become official when the first recorded synod will take place in the church under the um, reign of Mar Ischa and that uh, he will the, the, the church will decide that the bishop of Salih will be the patriarch of the east Okay, so next week we will go to the 4th century and uh, we'll talk about persecution and then we'll go to the 6th, 5th century, the school of Edessa and other schools and if we have time we will talk about the 6th and 7th century and the synods that took place and one of the segments of these will be also the, the The, the seats, the bishops and the, the metropolitan seats and in Amr Mariyat the diocese diocese of the Eastern Church. The main diocese, the metropolitan diocese, not the Ashan Metropolitan Diocese and uh, Episcopal Diocese. Okay, so Ahmed Bamsuma Bas uh, metropolitan diocese that uh, um, start to appear in the Church of the East. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.